I'm here with Josh Bloom uh, with Wise.io. We just had uh, heard you on the panel, and thank you so much for taking that time and, and joining us for the panel. More importantly, I wanted to, Josh, ask you about your take on Developer Week so far. Um, you know, the kind of people that you've seen here, uh, how the event has been for you. Well, one of the things that I learned is that there's a tremendous suite of tools that are available for developers to really abstract away all the tough stuff under the hood. Um, managing data in the cloud, uh, getting insights, which is what our company does, on data using machine learning. These things are supposed to be easy for everyone to use, but under the hood there's a lot of tech and there's uh, a lot of work that goes into it. So what, what I'm starting to see is that there are companies around here who are helping abstract all the hard stuff away and letting individuals who are just uh, maybe a developer by themselves or they're trying to build something new within a large enterprise to not have to worry about all of the stuff that they traditionally had to worry about. They can really worry about their own magic, right? Creating something that's special with their own domain knowledge, with their own insight. It, it allows developers to be more like artists and not have to be more like plumbers. Great. So, it, as somebody who's very tied into the university and, and you're a professor in Berkeley, if, for a college student that just graduated with an applicant and as a program or, or developer from UC Berkeley, what advice would you have for him or her in regards to how do I take advantage of all the tools and resources that are available in terms of big data, but also understanding the whole big data market and the various tools segments? Because as you know, it's a very fast pace uh, and fast changing environment in terms of vendors in the marketplace and and the various tools and options that they have, what recommendations would you have for them? I would say think about an application that you would love to have, or at least somebody in your immediate sphere would say, wow, thank you for building this for me, because this just made my life easier in some way, or I got some insight that I didn't know I could ever get out of the vast amount of data that's out there. Students that are graduating now are very sophisticated. They know kind of the landscape of the types of data that are available. And companies, big and small, are making it as easy as possible to get access to that data. The whole sort of API culture, um, you know, everywhere from getting eBay uh, insight to using a hunch, um, to Twitter feeds. All of this is actually pretty easy and it's easier than ever to be able to aggregate all that together. So I would say think about the vertical, think about the endpoint, think about who your target is, and then work from that perspective down rather than say, boy, there's just too much out there. What can we even surface out of it? Think about something that's special that you'd be excited to have. One question that I had is I know you're very involved with the Berkeley community and, and you have established your business there because of all the, the university graduates and the Berkeley vibe. Could you tell me about the startups in Berkeley and, and what the city is doing and what you're doing in terms of attracting new entrepreneurs to come and join? That's good. So, I, so we've started uh, something, the city of Berkeley started something called the Berkeley Startup Cluster. And um, I'm on the advisory committee. And this is really to try to lower the barrier to entry to start a company, but also try to solve this systemic problem that we have in Berkeley, which is the lack of good Class A office space. So there are these um, real big sob stories of what's happened throughout Berkeley's history of great companies that have started there. They've grown, uh, they've incubated, they've sort of absorbed all the great things that you can get out of Berkeley, and then they just get too big, and they have to move to Emeryville, or they have to move down to the South Bay. And so there's, there are initiatives that have been put in front of the, the, the voters of Berkeley to help sort of alleviate some of these constraints on, from an office building perspective. So that's kind of the, the, the sort of far end of, of where things are going. I think in five, six years from now, you're going to see a lot of great office spaces that it's going to make it reasonable for a company that's 100, 200, 300 size to be able to, to stick around. Uh, the history of Silicon Valley um, really starts with Berkeley, um, in a sense that some really wonderful initial companies were, were in Berkeley, incubated in Berkeley in the early 70s, and they wound up not feeling like this was the place to grow, and they wound up moving out. So, uh, 
you know, I don't think Berkeley has the ambition to be a new Silicon Valley, but we're kind of targeting a couple of different areas. Um, for me, and this is very self-serving, is the big data sort of software as a service area. It's easy to put a, a, a bunch of people in a room with a, with a laptop and a Wi-Fi and build an amazing company out of that. We don't need to have servers. We don't need to have wet labs. Um, and so there is some downtown office space that I think we're going to all try to start moving into. So my company, Wise.io, is there. Um, there's another great company called Compricity, um, Pollen.io. Uh, and this is just starting up. And the city is just starting to realize, you know, keeping people in Berkeley is in everybody's interest. And so for us, we see a huge value in getting access to uh, the Cal students who say, I'd much rather live in Berkeley or in the Berkeley area than go down south. I mean, who else would you want to live there? Um, so we see it as a big value proposition for us to attract top talent. There's a bunch of people that I know that commute every day to the city or commute down south, and they'd say, I would do anything. And I see that as, you know, from a CEO perspective, I see really and take a pay cut uh, to work where I can just bike to work or walk to work. And that is one of the magic uh, aspects of what I think uh, we're going to be able to do in Berkeley. Well, as somebody that grew up in Berkeley and fell in love with the UC Berkeley campus and go Bears all the way. so. Uh, how do we get in touch with you if you're interested in either being part of the Berkeley startup community or uh, leveraging your organization's technology? What's the best way? So uh, you can go to wise.io and you can email me at josh at wise.io. And uh, if you put in the subject header Berkeley Startup Cluster, I'm happy to pass you along to some of the other people who are part of this. The, the, uh, the, the university is involved, the city is involved. We really want to make this uh, happen. Wonderful, Josh. Well, thanks so much for taking the time yeah. to talk to us afterwards. Thanks Great for everything. Good luck.